Hi, I'm Steve Good with the Scroll Saw Workshop, and tonight I want to introduce or reintroduce a product that I've had available here on the blog for several years, and that is my book of jigsaw puzzle templates for the scroll saw. I think it was back in about 2003 I put out the first one of these books, and uh, it sells for $7, and uh, it's, it's done really well. There's been hundreds of these puzzles made by people, and they're really a lot of fun to make and, and fairly easy. The technique is pretty simple. Uh, that particular book um, needed to be updated, so I spent the last few days uh, updating the book with what I think is a better looking puzzle template plus uh, many more templates than was in the original book. Uh, let me pull the uh, PDF down here and show you. This is actually a sample, an 8x10 template uh, with 80 pieces from the original book. And this is what the pieces look like. And a similar pattern in the new book, you can see that the uh, puzzle pieces are, in my opinion, I think they look a little better. On top of that, in the old book, we had, I think, seven different templates available. Okay? In the new book, we now have, let me go back to the beginning here, uh, over 30 templates available. So you can see we've got all the 4x6, then we go up to the standard uh, 5x7 size puzzles, then up to the 8x10s, and we go all the way up to 300 pieces on the 8x10. Uh, so pretty much any size pattern uh, or puzzle that you want to create now you'll be able to with this new template. The uh, new pattern book is going to stay the same price. It'll be $7. Uh, it will be available for download in the Scroll Saw Workshop uh, store, which uh, you can find on my blog. And I'll put a link, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description below so you'll know where to go get it. Okay, that's what the new book looks like. Uh, that's the update that we're going to uh, talk about tonight. And now I just want to run through kind of a quick slideshow showing you how these are done so you'll know what you're getting and uh, understand how to make these if you've never done it before. Okay, what you're going to need to make one of these puzzles is up here you can see I have the... Uh, photograph that I want to use and I have printed this out on uh, high quality uh, photo paper on my printer. You could also just get an 8x10 print from Walgreens or any place else. Uh, in this case I want to create a box for my puzzle too so I'm just going to use a simple cardboard box that I got off of Amazon and I've printed out a smaller version of the pattern or the picture that I'm going to use for the puzzle and I've got that printed. I've got the template that I've chosen uh, for my 8x10 photograph. I've got some spray adhesive and I've got two pieces of Baltic birch plywood. And again, this is fairly important. You want to use a high grade plywood uh, to make these puzzles actually fit together very well. Uh, so I've got a 1 quarter inch thick piece of Baltic birch plywood and a 1 8 inch thick Baltic birch plywood, which is going to be our sacrificial uh, piece for the uh, pattern. Here is the template we're going to use. Here is the photograph I'm going to use. The box with the photograph ready to be glued onto the top. Two pieces of Baltic Burst plywood. Here I have cut out the photograph, used my spray adhesive to apply the uh, demonstration or whatever you want to call it. The uh, of the puzzle that's going to be inside the box and I've applied that to the box. Now I am taking my X-Acto knife and I'm trimming around the photograph to uh, cut off these edges up here and I did the same with the template. I cut it out to the exact size which happens to be 8 by 10 in this case. I've got the template and the 1 8 inch thick piece of plywood and I'm going to set those aside for right now. Now I'm going to apply the photograph to the one quarter inch thick piece of Baltic birch plywood and we want to make sure that the plywood is good and clean, get all the dust or sawdust off of it and also do the same with the uh, back of the uh, photograph we're going to use. To make this a permanent bond, we're going to actually use the spray adhesive on the wood and on the back of the photograph. Now a lot of times people will just apply the spray adhesive to the back of the photograph and put it down and that really doesn't give you as good of a bond and you want this to be permanent. So 
we are going to lay both of these pieces out, put our spray adhesive, a nice even, uh, kind of a medium coat on both. And here I have applied the photograph to the one quarter inch thick piece of Baltic Burst plywood. Uh, I've used a roller to roll it down to make sure we don't have any bubbles in it uh, and give it time to tack up real good before we actually start cutting. Now I'm going to get ready to make our sandwich that we're going to cut and the way we do this to make this easier is we've got the photograph on the one quarter inch thick. Here's our sacrificial piece of plywood. We're going to apply the template to this piece of plywood and then we're going to sandwich everything together and I'll show you in the next step what that looks like. We're going to have the photograph on the bottom then the 1 8 inch thick and then the template and we're going to use our blue painters tape to uh, before we apply the template to the wood we're going to uh, use our blue painters tape to make a sandwich of the 1 8 inch thick and the 1 quarter inch thick which is underneath this uh, we're going to put tape all the way around it. Here we've got everything all sandwiched together. We're going to use our uh, spray adhesive to apply the template to the top of the sandwich. That looks like this. Now we're ready at this point uh, to take this uh, jigsaw puzzle template and sandwich to the scroll saw. Now let me just back up to make sure there's clear understanding here. On the bottom of this sandwich we've got the one quarter inch thick piece of plywood with the photograph. The photograph is now sandwiched in the middle of all this and we do this to make it easier to apply the template but it also protects the photograph uh, while we're cutting. It prevents it from lifting, uh, it prevents it from getting scratched. Uh, it's just what I have found to be the best method uh, to get the cleanest puzzle out of this. Here's the box and the template. I'm going to use uh, the uh, Pegas number 2 aught blade. Uh, this is one of their modified geometry blades. Now in the past I've always used the Flying Dutchman Superior Puzzle Blade for these puzzles and um, I, this is the first time I'd actually tried this blade so before I got started into the puzzle I wanted to do some experiments and uh, here are the two blades. This is the Flying Dutchman Superior Puzzle Blade and this is the Pegasus 2 aught Modified Geometry Blade and this is the back side of the cut which is generally where uh, you know you want to look to make sure these puzzles are cutting uh, well. Now you want to use a really small blade because you don't want to remove very much wood or what we call uh, the kerf. We don't want the kerf to be very thick but, or the puzzles uh, pieces won't fit together snugly and we want as snug of a fit as we can without it being too hard to get them apart. Now with this puzzle being one quarter inch thick uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have it a little bit loose uh, because it can be hard to get apart because it's so thick uh, if you use like a jeweler's blade or something even smaller than a 2 aught. So if you look at this, uh, the kerf is very similar on the two blades and actually the Flying Dutchman, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the Pegasus 2 aught blade left a little bit of a cleaner cut on the back uh, than the uh, the uh, superior puzzle blade did from Flying Dutchman. And I think that's because the modified geometry actually has some reverse teeth uh, which is helping to clean up the back. So at this point I had convinced myself you know through this little test that the Pegasus blade would work fine and because uh, they are one of my sponsors I thought it would be appropriate for me to use that blade. I've got the uh, sandwich with the template on it over at the scroll saw. I'm going to begin the cuts. Again, I've got the uh, speed of the saw set down to about uh, probably about 60% speed. Um, there's no reason to get a hurry in a hurry on these and you want the pieces to, uh, to look pretty good when you get done. So I've slowed it down quite a bit. As I begin to cut, I'm going to start at one corner, cut a piece out, and you can see here is the 1 8 inch thick piece of waste or the sacrificial piece that we're going to throw away. And underneath that you can see we get the puzzle. Now the back of this puzzle piece will probably have the blue painters tape on it so you're going to want to peel that off. Then you can continue to cut the pieces. I usually start at one corner, work my way across and then just keep going. As I cut the pieces I reassemble them over on my uh, 
workbench just to keep the pieces straight. That way I don't actually have to build the puzzle when I get done. Continue to cut, continue to put the pieces together, and eventually we'll have a completed puzzle ready to go in the box. I take the puzzle, the completed puzzle, over to my spray booth and I apply some clear uh, acrylic gloss to the puzzle. I usually give it about three coats. It just makes it a little more durable. And uh, if you use a matte finish uh, photograph, sometimes it looks a little dull and this will add a little bit of gloss to it. If you're using the uh, a high gloss photograph to begin with, you can probably skip this step. Uh, it won't hurt it to spray it. Uh, but sometimes it'll actually, uh, the uh, gloss photograph will actually uh, degloss a little bit with this acrylic spray on it. Uh, so just use your judgment. Maybe do a test spray before you make up your mind what you want to do. And now we've got our completed puzzle, like I said, ready to go in the box. Uh, I think it really makes a really nice presentation with these white boxes. In the original uh, template book that I sold, I had uh, patterns for wooden boxes to put these pieces in. And uh, uh, actually, I kind of have come to the conclusion that I prefer these white clear boxes with the picture on top of it. I think it actually gives a better presentation than the wooden boxes. You can buy these boxes in different sizes on Amazon. Uh, just... Uh, uh, if you just do a search for cardboard boxes, you'll find some. They're fairly inexpensive, and they have uh, they generally come with cotton or some kind of uh, material inside them. You can't see in this picture very well, but there's like a cotton batting underneath uh, the pieces here. And you can buy different sizes for the different size puzzles. And there's our completed box. So that's my scroll saw, jigsaw, puzzle templates. Uh, there, are, Those are the instructions for how to, to cut them. They make unbelievably uh, nice gifts for weddings, birthdays, any special occasion. These turn out really good. And uh, you don't have to cut a 300-piece puzzle uh, for like a wedding photograph. Uh, for it to be uh, an heirloom that's passed down from... Uh, year to year to you know family members and stuff even just a you know a fairly fairly uh, modest number of pieces looks really really good so uh, but if you want to get more advanced and cut a 300 piece puzzle you've got that template available so i hope you enjoy this new product that i'm putting out uh, it will be available like i said on my blog at www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com i'm steve good thanks for being here with me at the scroll saw workshop and we'll catch you next time.